Welcome back to Sam Solo Adventures and welcome to Nan Province. In this video I arrive in the absolutely stunning town of Nan and of course I'm going to hit some food markets and there's plenty of temples, plenty of sites. So yeah, let's get started. Yes, so I'm currently walking my way to Chiang Mai Terminal 3 bus station. Chiang Mai's got quite a few different bus stations. Because uh, we're heading out of Chiang Mai again, gonna go to a place called Nam. So yeah, I'm looking like a proper backpacker. Uh, it's a fair trek. But it's early morning, so it's not too hot. Um, I've got the time, and I'm going to be sitting on a bus for quite a few hours. So I figured, you know what, take the walk out here. Um, yeah, it's quite, it's quite nice at this time in the morning, isn't it? All right, so I'm just on my way to the, um, to the terminal, to the bus station. And I just walked past this place, so I thought I'd just give you a quick show you around it's something a little bit different that I've not seen before. Got a cab. What it is, it's like proper wholesale uh, fruit and veg. So everything is just prepared on the back of these lorries. Got cabbage, lettuce, tomatoes here cabbage over here so yes yeah, proper wholesale i'm guessing for restaurants sort of stuff i haven't seen anything like this before massive bags of avocados we've got potatoes uh, like daikon radish Little uh, baby eggplants, sweet potatoes, garlic, buttercup. Just uh, disturbing people while they're having their breakfast. Um, yeah, so it's pretty cool, just it's quite a bit different. It's massive, isn't it? Like the massive scale of just everything, literally just off the back of the truck. Hey, look, you come in. Nan. Anyway, I spoke to the information lady who was just amazing, uh, so helpful, and she gave me this map of Nan and she was telling me um, to go to the Nan markets and yeah, so absolutely set up. <laughs> so we're in Nan, uh, down at the markets, morning markets here. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit about Nan. So Nan is a is the capital of the province of Nan, and the province of Nan uh, reaches all the way over to the Lao border. So there's quite a lot of influence uh, of that Lao culture. And you can see it quite, uh, quite a lot in um, the food, obviously architecture. Um, Nan town itself is fairly small. It's got a population of about 20,000. And uh, it's a big uh, tourist spot for Thai tourists, but they rarely get foreign tourists up here. Uh, people are really, really friendly up here, really chatty. 
Um, it's a really, I'm really, really enjoying the friendly, 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 friendly vibe here. Uh, so one thing I noticed straight away at this food market um, is that there's a lot more beef. So traditionally, you know, normally, we've got buckets here, entrails. Usually it's Swadika. England. From England. <laughs> yeah, long way away. Uh, moo? Moo? Moo. Buffalo. Buffalo? Ah, okay. Topunka. Okay. Okay, I thought, I thought that was beef. It's not beef, it's buffalo. Buffalo. Excellent. Uh, Aroi? Aroi. Aroi, okay. Aroi. 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 So, yeah, buffalo, there we go. Okay, I thought we were looking at beef. Buffalo. See? People are so friendly here. Love it. All right, let's see what else we can find. So, this is a pork store. We've got the pig's blood here. All the offal, kidney, heart, livers in there, mint. These guys are. I think these are the intestines. These are quite prized over here. And you see them on the markets, they're quite expensive. Got ribs down here. Cool head. <laughs> Okay, here's one for you. This is definitely something I've not seen before. They, I believe, are bread. Now, please tell me if I'm wrong. But they're beautifully butchered. You get the insides of it as well. I'd be interested to see that cooked uh, on a stall. I'm not sure whether I would try that. I would try that, sure. Okay, would I? Mm. Not sure. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, wasn't expecting to see that. As I say, it's very different here. You can definitely see the regional differences. And that's what I love about Thailand. Is that there's so many regional differences and you don't have to go far. Uh, and you get to see uh, different cuisines, different cultures, people preserving their, their traditional way of life. It's fantastic. Thank you. I think, uh, well, this stall just smells incredible. Oh, the fragrance is coming off this is just unreal. So I think we've got here a green curry, I think. It's got those beautiful eggplants, blood, the blood uh, jelly sort of thing. I'd say it's chicken, I think. Oh, yeah, it could be chicken or pork. Oh, this aloe, beautiful. Uh, this is red Guy? Guy? Guy. Yeah. Uh, so that one's guy, chicken. Uh, guy? Thai pa. Gang Thai pa. Gang, yeah. Thai pa, gang Thai. Gang Thai pa. Oh, blah, blah. It's got fish in it. Oh, aloe. This is red Thai pa. Yeah. Oh my god, honestly, the fragrance is smell. Smell is aloe, and then this one is aloe, the aloe. Uh, bitter melon, which we see around. Uh, I think we've got some sort of oh, nam prick back here as well. The nam, I think this one think is the uh, chili with aubergine in it. I see Thailand. I've really noticed that Thailand is like it's just fragrance all the time. You're walking around and all of a sudden something will hit your nose and it, 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 it could be a curry it could be like durian being sold on the street um, it could just be the smell of a grill you know like grilled meats coming up but yeah all of a sudden you'll be walking along and something will hit your nose and you're looking around like where's it coming from it's just fragrance of thailand what i've noticed beautiful <laughs> Thank you.
So these things are like a uh, traditional fried fried snack. Look at it go. So it's a, it's a white dough, and it's probably got two layers to it. So when it goes into the oil, the two layers kind of separate, and they make this cross, which is that's how it's designed to be. That's it's sort of traditional like that. And then obviously they fry them up. These things absolutely fly out. Look at that. They can't make them quick enough. I see these around quite a lot. Uh, I think it's quite a traditional snack at markets in the afternoon. Uh, sweet, I think. Okay, so this saw here has got what is a really local uh, herb spice and it influences quite a lot of the dishes up here, I believe. Uh, it's called Ma Quen and it's very similar to the Szechuan peppercorn uh, in flavour, apparently. Uh, and yeah, so they put it in, in lard, uh, which is a, a, a spicy um, mint meat sort of salad. I think you can have it raw, you can have it cooked. Um, Ma Quen. So they've got loads of it here. So it's just, they grow it in little bunches. Looks quite similar to uh, Szechuan. Just crunched a bit up there. Yeah, it's definitely, it's got heaps of aroma to it. It's got that citrusiness that, that Szechuan's got. So yeah, Makwen. Very regional. Yeah. <laughs> this is another another new one on me. So scales. I'm fairly used to. Okay. Yeah, these little guys here, little tortoise. I'm really hoping that these are for pets. And uh, not for eating, but the snail's pretty sure for eating. Wow, incredible store. What have we got here? Bugs, bugs, frogs on sticks. Uh, I'm going to say pork rind. And then these little bad boys again. Crickets back here. I'm going to have to try some of this stuff. Uh, but I kind of want to be guided in it. I don't know if you, if you like take these home, cook them, reheat them, or whether you just eat them like that. Um, I don't want to just eat it cold if it's supposed to be, you know, heated up and put in dishes or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so I need a little bit of guidance. On that. Nan is absolutely overrun with amazing temples. There's loads of them. And this is just another one. Wat Si Fan Tom. Also known as the Golden Temple, and you can see why. It just absolutely radiates in the sun. It's stunning. Obviously, the exterior is just incredible. But inside, Beautiful, right? and there's golden statues, but uh, and then the walls are painted with depictions of Nan life uh, and the history of Nan. And it's obviously quite uh, brutal, really, because there's a lot of you know, sort of burning down of houses, a lot of invasions. Yeah, and then outside here, also, we've got something which is quite traditional to uh, the Nan lifestyle. I think this is around the river here. They have a river festival and, and a rowing, a, a boat festival. So you can see here, got this incredible boat, which was used in the boat race. I, don't know, I hope you can get a, an idea of just how long that boat is. I have no idea how many people would sit in that boat. 
And then down here we've got obviously a less ornate one, but perhaps a slightly more traditional one. What Ming Wang, hopefully. And this is another incredible temple of Nan, and another massive tourist attraction here. And you can see why uh, straight away when you walk in. It's absolutely stunning. Now, this wasn't always like this. There has been several temples beforehand and it's been reconstructed uh, in this absolutely incredible style but I think what's really important about this particular temple is the city pillar which is located here and uh, it's something that the non people are very proud of this. Okay, so third what of the day. I did tell you Nan is full of watts and I'm not going to take you around to every single watt every single temple because uh, I just don't have time myself and I think you'd get a bit bored but I'm going to take you around to some of the main attractions and this one is called Wat Phu Min in fact I'll tell you a story so when I was in Changdao I met a guy uh, he was a strange guy but he he was an atheist it was an American South Korean American uh, atheist and he, he was asking what to do in Changdao um, he didn't want to go into any temples because he was an atheist and I thought you're going to really struggle in Thailand if you're not going to see any temples because there are a lot of them anyway this is Wat Phu Min and there's a few reasons why this one is so special so it was believed to be built by the ruler of Nan after a six year of reign in So the ruler of Nam in his six year of reign in 1596, I believe it has supposed to have had restoration since then. So as you can see from this side, the temple itself actually sits on the Naja. You see the Naja sort of run into it, underneath it almost. That was Nan, day one. Pretty epic, I think. And there's plenty more to come. So subscribe, hit the notification button so that you can see when the next video is coming up.